Hi, it's Rob Moore here. I want to share with you the seven main things that break businesses. The things that maybe blind sign businesses that um, some businesses don't prepare for or areas that people avoid because they're so focused on maybe creating the product or doing the things they enjoy rather than the things they need to do. So what I'll do is I'll share what the seven things are and then I'll give you a little bit of detail into each one. Um, so the first one is when people say the product sells itself. I've got an alternative view to that. The second thing is not actually knowing what their business model is. The third thing is not saving cash when things are going well for when it gets hard. The fourth thing is um, giving the market what they think the market wants rather than what the market actually wants. The fifth thing, could be five and six, um, is overspending and underspending. Uh, the sixth thing is relying on single sources, like single sources for recruitment, for leads, for income, for suppliers, for media, etc. And then the seventh thing is not having a close eye on the metrics, the KPIs, the KRAs, the PNLs, etc. Um, so I've made some notes here to make sure that I give you some good deep content. Let's get cracking then. The seven, you could call these uh, business breakers. So the first thing, a lot of people think that if they create a good product, it will sell itself. That's the biggest load of hogwash I've ever heard in my life. A lot of children listen to my podcast now, so I'm trying to work on my language. Uh, no, nothing walks out of your office and goes and makes you millions. The product does not sell itself. Of course, the better the product, over time, the more referrals you're going to get, the more reach, the more impact. But for the first few months, maybe even years, you've got to go out and sell it. You've got to pitch it. You've got to um, create a, an ideal client demographic. You've got to understand that market. Then you've got to create a compelling marketing message, which says in as few words as possible, the benefits of the, the, um, the product or the service you have, how it changes their lives, how it serves them, how it serves, how it solves, how it makes their life easier, faster, better. A great example of this, and this would have, would have been much more difficult than they made it sound. When the iPod came out, everyone at the time was talking about um, you know, hard drive size and speed size and all these letters, megahertz and stuff, RAM, that people probably didn't really understand or didn't really care about. And then Steve Jobs and the Apple team came up with, for the iPod, 10,000 songs in your pocket. Now that sells the iPod. The iPod doesn't sell itself. I mean, when you're starting out, no one knows your products or services. So you know when people say, oh, well, my product sells itself. It means they're either crap at selling. Um, it means that um, you know, they've got maybe a, an overconfidence in their product um, because you've got to get out there and push it uh, and get it. At, uh, yeah, I've made my point. I'm going to move on to the next one. No point waffling. Uh, OK, so number two then is actually knowing what your business really is. Uh, now, most businesses don't realise that they're actually a marketing company or they're a digital agency. They think they are a creator of their products and services. But if you don't get your products and services out to as many people as possible, then you, you don't have a business. So, you, you, know, are a, you are a marketing company, you are a digital agency, you, you are a brand. Your job is to be a, a visionary and a champion uh, for your products and service as much as it is to be an artist a watchmaker, an innovator, a creator, and a designer. And if you're no good at the selling and marketing stuff and you just want to create and design and innovate, then you need to align yourself with people, whether it's partners, staff, etc., um, affiliates, who can do the selling and the marketing and, and get your product out to the market for you. Um, also, you know, businesses can change over time. So you, you can start being a certain company, like Tiffany started being a stationary company. And of course, they pivoted into jewellery um, when the, the world changed or when their vision changed. Uh, and, you know, there's many companies like Coca-Cola started medicinal and Rolls-Royce aircraft. And there would have been a certain amount of culture and, you know, how the world changes, evolution, innovation that drove the, the pivots of these companies. And many of those companies wouldn't be around today had they not changed and gone with the, the, the changing climate. Now, I've got a few more here. Um, let's have a look. So Berkshire Hathaway were a textile business. That's the company that um, Warren Buffett uses for his investing. Nokia used to be a paper mill. You could argue they need to change again. Um, 3M, who did the post-it note, reinvent themselves every 10 years. WD-40 stands for Water Displacement 40 because they had 39 failures and got it right on the 40th attempt. Henry Ford had two failed car manufacturing companies. Uh, so, you know, the list goes on and on um, of how the, the great companies evolved 
changed their, their model, their market, their product. You know, in 50 years, Apple and Microsoft and Amazon may be completely different companies. So you want to make sure that you're evolving with the times. Let me get my notes back. Here we go. All right, then. So the third major mistake people make in business is they get complacent when things are going well. So they spend money frivolously. They, you know, they relax some of their criteria. They don't keep an eye on the cash. They think, oh, things are great. They don't realise that things could be bad tomorrow. The best time to save for a recession is either in the current recession for the next one, 15, 20 years in advance, um, or when you've got money, when you've got cash. So when things are going good, you want to have a little bit of fear in you. I think it was Buffett that originally said, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Uh, so make sure that you are stockpiling cash and reserves of you know, whatever it is that could um, grow your business when things are hard or at least could um, you help you endure a recession. Complacency is definitely a major problem in business I see all the time. When things start to go well, and I work with partners who are like this, trainers who are like this, even staff, you know, when they have a good start, they're like, oh man, things are going great, oh, let's just chill out, oh, we'll easily get there. I, I never have that attitude, I've probably got a little bit of fear in me. Um, but when things are going good, I want to push them to go better, and I want to plan for when they could be bad. Okay, number four then, is not giving the clients and the market what it wants, it's giving the clients and the market what you want. So Kodak designed, invented digital photography, but actually um, they didn't, um, well, they, they actually, they went bust. Uh, and obviously digital photography is huge now. I mean, who does? Um, I don't know what, what you call non-digital photography, um, you know, Polaroids and who actually does that kind of photography anymore? Not many people. Um, so the company that invented digital photography didn't pivot and evolve into digital photography and went bust. So you've got to make sure that you're, always watching your clients and your markets and serving them what they need, not just what you want to give them. Uh, Blockbuster, same thing, you know, like people believe that Netflix put them out of business. But I mean, Blockbuster were doing the subscription model decades before Netflix. Blockbuster put Blockbuster out of business because they, they didn't listen to the clients. I mean, the clients didn't want late fees. Uh, you know, and at a certain point, the clients didn't want the physical DVDs. But of course, when the physical DVDs were big, um, you know, the upload speeds, the streaming speeds weren't, weren't very good. So I guess they thought, well, that's never going to uh, take off. And of course it did. And, and they paid the price. OK, number five, then, is over or underspending. Now, both of these, um, depending on your, your personality traits, uh, can really break your business. Underspending means you don't get new leads. You don't reach new markets. You know, there comes a time in business when you've picked all the low hanging fruit of social media and your friends and your family and your contacts and you have to actually do marketing and advertising. You know, you have to reach new leads and clients. You'll always want to be testing new lead sources, investing in um, creating interest, awareness and getting people into your product staircase so that you can ultimately sell them your products and services. Um, so sometimes I've looked at, you know, maybe our months when we've, we've gone through our management accounts and thought, actually, we needed to spend 20 or 30,000 pound more on marketing because I can see that in three to six months, we're going to have low show ups at events or, you know, our, um, our services aren't going to sell maybe as well as I would have hoped. Uh, and if you've already sold to your existing uh, databases or communities or capacity, then you've got to grow. Um, now, overspending is obviously more common. Um, most people tend to not keep their eye on the numbers. They don't manage their key performance indicators. They don't know what they're spending. They have too many subscriptions. You know, they have this fear of not getting clients, so they spend money blindly. And, you know, they hope that a big magazine ad or a newspaper ad will save their lives. So you've got to kind of balance that. Uh, and that, you do that by having a budget that you set yearly, break it down per month. You spend the bud budget, you review the KPIs to see if you went over or under budget to see if that spend hit you the turnover and net profit that you were after and then you uh, readjust your next month budget accordingly spend a bit more spend a bit less or improve some of the systems and the tracking and then you repeat that process you've got to keep a real eye on your spending okay number six then is never relying on one single source whether that's where you get all your recruitment from or you know one main member of staff who has all the uh, ip of your business in their head or multi, uh, only relying on one lead source, only relying on one income source, only relying on one supplier, only relying on one client, only relying on one media outlet. You need multiple streams of leads, clients, recruitment, um, revenue, cash flow. It's vital. Uh, and the way I think you do that best is to focus on your main one, 60, 70 percent of your marketing time. Uh, and then your second one, 20 to 30 percent of your marketing time and then test a new one. 
um, with a small budget, a small amount of time. And then as you get your main one working well, you systemize that and you just move them along like a con conveyor belt so you can add a new one into your stream. We're constantly testing new lead sources. Been testing Amazon ads for 18 months, been testing Spotify ads now for a few months. And these are ad campaigns we weren't running, you know, two or three years ago. I'm growing, I'm focusing much more now on my Instagram and my LinkedIn, uh, you know, areas where I was just really playing because I think it's vital that uh, you get maximum reach to get maximum impact to get maximum income. Uh, okay, and then seven, the final one, is not having a close eye on the metrics. So they are your key performance indicators. They are your profit and losses, um, your key result areas where you're supposed to, where you get the best return on your time invested. Um, the balance sheet of your company, tracking all the spend and the return on spend and the cost per lead and the cost per sale and the lifetime client value and the net profit per vertical if you've got multiple products, uh, profit and loss for each product as well as a profit and loss for your whole business. Uh, now, this is not something I particularly enjoy discovering. It's something I've learned to enjoy reading uh, because when I read all my KPIs, I see the data hidden in plain sight, which can help me improve my business. But, you know, I'll use my team or uh, some software to extract all those KPIs. And I think we have about 120 KPIs we measure now. Uh, we get management accounts seven days after month end that we track and we get commentary from our finance team in. We look at the balance sheet. I believe it's once a quarter. Um, we look at the, all the marketing and sales KPIs once a month, uh, and, and it's really, really important. Okay, so don't make these following seven mistakes. Let me summarize them. Uh, number one, no, the product does not sell itself. You have to get it out there. Number two, uh, if you don't know what your business is, that you're a marketing company, you're, that you are allowed to sell. Um, you know, Kodak didn't realize what their business was. Blo Blockbuster didn't realize what their business was. Um, I realised that actually we are a marketing company and a digital media agency, not just a property training business and property investors. And I realised that a few years ago and that certainly helped us grow our business. Number three, people don't save cash when they're doing well and therefore when it gets hard, they have no cash left. So avoid complacency. Be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Uh, people who don't, number four, give the clients and the markets what they want. They give the clients and markets what they want. Um, but, you know, business is really about finding a problem creating a meaningful solution, creating a message and, and some marketing that helps your ideal to client market understand how your product and service will solve their problem and then create a fair exchange environment where the fees that they pay are equal to the value that they get or more and where you get a fair profit margin. That's really the model of business. Um, number five, overspending or underspending, not investing enough in marketing for your future lead sources or wastage and leakage, you know, because you're too big or because you're complacent or because you've not got a, a close eye on your cost. So you're focusing on turnover rather than net profit. Number six is relying on a single lead source, a single source of leads, single source of income, single source of suppliers, single source of media. Uh, it's vital that you have multiple streams of leads, income, clients, recruitment, strategy, etc. So that, um, you know, you're not relying on one source because one source that breaks means that you fall like a you know, a domino effect, if you like. Um, and then finally, not having a close eye on the metrics, the KPIs, the KRAs, the profit and loss, the balance sheet, or the metrics. You cannot master what you do not measure. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Um, this is going to go on the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast. So if you're watching the live, subscribe to the D Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast if you don't already. It'll be up in a few weeks time. Also, if you're watching and you're not yet a supporter, please find the Become a Supporter blue button on my Facebook page, Rob Moore Progressive on Facebook. I'm giving my supporters access to a private WhatsApp group. I'm giving them two one-to-one -one calls for 10 minutes a year. We're doing random meetups through the year. I'm giving them exclusive events, exclusive discounts. Um, I did an Ask Me Anything yesterday. I've done two in the last week. Um, this support program is building massive, massive momentum. We're creating this really disruptive community. We're becoming very good friends. I had dinner with 20 of them, of the supporters, um, just a few days ago. Um, so the content level there is at another level. So if you thought this was useful, uh, you wait till you see my support program. I'm trying to create the best support program in the world. Facebook asked for two things, exclusives and discounts. I'm giving about eight things, all for £3.49 a month. Cancel at any time. So I'm going big. I'm being disruptive. So make sure you do. Uh, and just go to my Facebook page, um, which is Rob Moore Progressive on Facebook, and find the Become a Supporter blue button. And it'll, it'll give you the instructions there. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.